Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rahah Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorant calls God, and Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, whom the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, to the house of David, all right, that are pushing his word in sincerity and truth, and much love to the men, women, and children of the uh, one third that are listening, learning, and helping in all sincerity to you all say shalom and greetings. All right, so we got a, another uh, lesson to go on. Uh, Lord Willingness Edifying and uh, <laughs> Elon, man. You know, it's, it's going to be on Elon this time. You know, I, got, I did an Elon video probably about a month or two months ago about some of them being atheists, you know. But now, of course, you have Elon on the exact opposite fence to where... They're they're not atheists, but they just believe in so many gods. It's like, you know, when it comes to these people, there can't be one god. All right, it has to be multiple gods. Yeah, either there's no god, or it got to be a whole lot of gods. You know what I mean? So, um, oh, let me. Matter of fact, this is not the premise of the lesson, but let me get it. You know, because I don't want to necessarily talk about their gods. It's more so this ritual that they're taking part in. Okay, um, this is Jeremiah. 2 and 11 it says has the nation changed their gods which are yet no gods but my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit all right so these other nations all right the so-called um in this instance the so-called uh east indians okay which are known in the bible as uh the elamites okay so their gods are no gods man they don't exist OK, but it says our people are doing something that don't profit because you'll find Jake amongst them doing things like this and taking taking hold in these rituals because they feel like they can reach some level of enlightenment. All right. But that's not the way. And that's not what the Bible speaks of. So let me go on on this article a little bit. This is from the BBC News. It says extreme piercing, a festival of self-inflicted pain. Let me show my brightness is up. All right. A self-inflicted pain. And look at him. Got he got a smile on this. Look at him, man. Peasants, man. You know he's hanging himself. Ultimately, you know. But it says warning. Some readers, some readers will find the images of piercing disturbing. All right. So an ancient pre-harvest festival in India, state of West Bengal, or Bengal, in which men pierced themselves with iron rods and hooks, was canceled this year due to coronavirus. So did these pictures, these images are going to be from the previous year, but I saw it and I thought it was a great exhortation for the brothers just to learn about the the weird, let, let's just say it out how it is, the fucking weird ways of the heathen, man. Heathens are weird people, all right? You other nations are weird people. Y'all do some weird shit, man. And that's why we look at y'all like y'all crazy and y'all think we the, 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 the irony of it all. They look at Jake like we the craziest. Even your bug out of his mind, two third Jake. He might just be a nigga, but he don't do no like super, super weird stuff, man. You know, he might be robbing people. He might do drugs, you know. He might do stuff like that, but they don't do nothing super weird, bro. You know, our people get into some things that they are not. But, man, as a whole, we don't do stuff like this, man. Even the wicked of our nation. All right. But let me go on. It says. To pierce themselves with iron hooks, iron iron rods and hooks. <laughs> and that's spiritual too. We're gonna get that too. I didn't even think about that. Was canceled this year due to coronavirus. But Sahar Zand, who attended the event last April, reports that many local people believe that without this show of devotion to the Hindu deity, Shiva, crops are bound to fail. Okay? So they're gonna go in on that Shiva a little bit. Now I have a Wikipedia article pulled up on Shiva. Shiva, I'm gonna show y'all soon, but let me read a little bit more first. It said it is early morning, one day in mid-April, almost exactly a year ago, on the bank of the Ringer River Ganges. A handful of young men are sitting in a circle under the shade of a big tree. They are wearing bright red and are carefully sharpening iron rods called bursies, about two feet two feet six centimeters long. The sharper the rod the lower the risk of injury in the ritual that awaits them later in the day. Okay. 
The oldest member of the group, Sandos 26, is the only one in this group who has taken part in the self-harming rituals before. Over the years, he has had lips, ears, arms, chest, belly, and back impaled, he tells me. Yes, it was painful, he says, but the pain is temporary. It's the reward that will last. All right. We we all have to pay a price for what to get what we want. I mean, in, in some regard, I can respect what he means by that. But this is not the extent that you go to in order to receive it. OK, yes, pain is temporary and the reward of Yahweh Shemi al is going to last. All right. And we all have to sacrifice this life in order to get what we want. So I respect that statement. But the fact that you're taking it physically and carnally is the is the issue. OK, so I'm going to get to a certain point that I got a reset, but I want to see this. Uh, I want you all to see this picture first. Not this one, the next one, I believe. Their reward, the reward they are seeking is a good harvest. Right, right. So this is the reward they want, right? Because they said it started to damage their crops. In the village of Krishna Devpur in West Bengal, uh, the pre-harvest festival of Gajan. So that's the name of the festival, Gajan. Coinciding with the end of the Bengali calendar is the biggest celebration of the year. Participating is the ultimate way for the farmers to demonstrate their devotion to Hindu deity Shiva who they believe is responsible for granting them a favorable climate for their crops. And see, just like in the days of Egypt, the Lord will destroy your crops, man. It's of the Lord, all right? It's not of any false false deities. It's of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua to decide if your crop is going to be profitable or not. Once we start the ritual, Sandos tells me our Lord Shiva will possess us and we gain his superhuman strength and courage. You see that? So that's how they believe they get it. They possess it once they start the rituals and they said they gain his superhuman strength and courage. But that ain't true. We're going to we're going to read now. It says what they do to gain their uh, superhuman strength. Um, we can kind of skip this part. Once the iron rods are sharpened, one by one, the men dive into the holy river to purify their bodies and souls. <laughs> um, uh, that's nonsense. Not nonsense, but it's not necessary. It says he takes me to his family far rows of rotten vegetables stretched before me, bordered by bear mangoes, trees and fly infested fruits. Sometimes we get no rain at all. Let me show you that picture because there's drought behind him. Sometimes we get no rain at all when we're supposed to and our crops die in a drought. Other times we get such untimely and heavy rains that our fields flood and our harvest gets ruined, he says. Heat waves has also been coming more, becoming more intense. That's because we're in these last days, man. Y'all by Shem Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father and His Son, are plaguing you people's crops, plaguing you people's lands, uh, intensifying the heat, all right? You can call it global warming all you want to, man. That's your how about shimmy out. Ultimately, you people have been so wicked and you've been polluting the atmosphere, all right, with all the with the in the ozone layer that you're really doing it. But it's all through the spirit of the Lord, okay? So they're not wrong in the sense that there is a divine entity that's causing this, but the problem is you're praying to the wrong God, okay? The pro uh, the problem is climate change, a joy tells me. Not Shiva's rage. And once he finishes studying Bengali literature at a college in Kolkata, he has decided to look for a job elsewhere. OK. So I'm just read this. It says uh, Shiva. Is, this is what they chant. Shiva is the most powerful. It's a hundred filled with another hundred men or so who like them who are wearing nothing but a red cloth around their waist. Shiva is the most powerful deity. They chant and all his devotees must participate in his worship. That's what they chant. OK. So um, this next one, it says they have been chanting this mantra for hours. It is a crucial part of a process that is meant to bring them into a state of trance. They must fast on the day of the festival. All right. So you got to fast. Let's get that. So it said they got to fast on the day of the festival, but may drink alcohol and smoke marijuana. This is all thought to reduce the risk of the injury. So let's get that. I'm not trying to make this about marijuana either. But the thing is, you know. Let's go to the blue letter, actually. You know, they said they smoking marijuana. And I just did a video on this the other day about the coronavirus. But, um, you know, it's, it, it's still beautiful because these people here, they thinking that smoking weed is getting them close is 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 they're really just dumbing themselves down. They're null, they're nulling their senses by getting drunk and smoking weed. All right. In Genesis 1 to 29 and the most high Allah said, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth 
and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree, tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. All right. So they're not supposed to be smoking weed. All right. They out there getting high and getting drunk. That's the only reason they pain don't feel the same. They getting high and getting drunk, man. OK, period. All right. So now this picture coming up is the one that I wanted to get. It says, uh, uh, I turn away voluntarily when I took back. I see that a couple of devotees still chanting Sh Shiva's mantra already have several iron rods in their flesh, in their cheeks, ears, lips, nose, chest, salakia, arm and back. OK, and this guy, I guess he's supposed to be a priest. All right. Um, it says the priest takes one of the, you know, which I mean, if he's an Israelite, he could be a priest, but. You know, most likely he's an Elamite, all right, which you aren't priests because the true priests, the true Kahanim are from the nation of Israel. All right. Those are the nation of kings and priests, according to Revelation fifth chapter. All right. Um, the, the priest takes one of the sandals, one of sandals, sharpened robes and rubs against a banana for lubrication, muttering a mantra. He begins to pull on sandals cheek quickly. He pierces it with the rod. It goes in one side and out the other. Sandos frowns and his whole body trembles. The priest penetrates the same cheek with two more rods, leaving them in. All right. So look at these people, man. This is what they're doing with these with with these rods. This is what they're doing for themselves. Self-inflicting pain, thinking that's getting them closer to the heavenly father. OK, let me get a precept. This is Leviticus uh, 19 and 27. It says, "Ye," and this is these are commandments to the Israelites. But the 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 um, the uh, the other nations are going to have to follow this in the kingdom of heaven. I'm gonna start at 26. Actually, it says, "Ye shall not eat anything with blood, and neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times." And ultimately, they're using an enchantment. This is witchcraft. What they're doing, okay? It says, "Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard." Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. All right. So they're making cuttings in their flesh, man. All right. And it's for the dead because those those um those uh false deities that they have are they're they're ultimately dead, man. They're not living powers. All right. And it's for their crops. Their crops are dead, too. But Leviticus 21 and 5, it says. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. OK, you shouldn't make any cuttings in your flesh. And, and see, it's one thing to get ear piercings. All right. You know, but it's another thing to make. These are making cuttings in their flesh, man. All right. Because um, these 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 don't th some of these guys end up having these holes for a really long time or uh you know i'm going to go down and i'm going to show you one example but see look at this they're making cuttings all in their flesh man they do it in their face in their back their lips their arms their cheeks their nose okay wicked custom man all right so they talk about another guy uh, it says a small teardrop is the only sign of pain i see on his face yeah because he's drunk and he hired his mind these people bugged out, man. I wanted to get. Let me see if I can uh, remember. Let me get. Let me see if this verse applies right now. Uh, Romans twelve. Yeah, Romans twelve and two. Oh, matter of fact, I'm just gonna read one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto Most High, which is your reasonable service. So this is how uh, how Elamites and the other nations, they present their bodies as a living sacrifice. See, where they think that they got to pierce themselves. And, and the scriptures say they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Let me get that. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, that's First Timothy or Second Timothy 6 chapter. And it's talking about money, but it's the, I thought it's ironic because they actually pierce themselves. Yeah, it's all about money, but I just came to mind. First Timothy six and ten. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have covered it after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. All right. Ultimately, it is in a form of them uh, wanting to get money because that's affecting their crops. You know, 
it's affecting their crops, so it's affecting their money. So they're making them sacrifices, and that's they think that's how they present in their bodies. But that's not what the scripture is speaking of. We present our bodies by going out to the highways and byways and making our faces and are known, and by actually not and not being ashamed of the gospel. All right, but this isn't a, what they're doing is not a show of faith. What they're doing is witchcraft. It says, and be this is the point, and be not conformed to this world. Let's get this word conformed. Strong's G forty nine sixty four, suschematizo, suschematizo, All right, and it says to conform oneself, one's mind and character to another's pattern, fashion oneself according to. Okay, so basically, you're not supposed to follow the fashions of the other nations, the patterns of the other nations. All right, it's just like when you go and get a job. When you got to put on a shirt and tie, you're conforming to the, the culture of not only Esau, Edom, but you're conforming to the culture of that job. So you're, you're, you change yourself to the fashion of that way. So when these Elamites are out there doing that and even Jake that follow this, they're conforming themselves to the way of the heathen. OK, it says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what that is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high. So when you change your ways through these laws, uh, statutes and commandments and follow your how by Shemiah all right, you you know now that you're not conformed to the way of this world. And you transform the renewing of your mind, whereas for these people, they, they're clearly not transformed by the renewing of their mind. They're still harming, harming their fleshly bodies. And I mean, you know, it's nothing wrong with fasting. All right. But when you fasting defeats the purpose, if you're getting drunk and high, the point is to be more in tune with the spirit. But you're getting far away from it because now you're being more in tune with the, you know, we always say liquor is called spirits. So it's OK to drink. But if you if you going and you ain't eating and then you getting drunk and high all day, you getting in tune with Satan, man. OK. And I guarantee they ain't just like drinking mod modestly. They getting throw, man. You know, that's really what they're looking for, too. Yeah, let's get high. We get high. We get drunk. You know, it says the biggest festival. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. She said, to, whoever wrote this, to my amazement, I do not see a single drop of blood in the entire process. That's because of how sharp they, they sharpen those things and they know the excess points of skin not to puncture any major uh, arteries or wounds. That's why they do that. All right. It says, but the festival is not quite over yet. The devotees are now preparing for shock. Shirak Puja, the last and arguably most gruesome part of the festival for this closing ritual. Self torture is taken to the next level. A few experienced devotees will swing on a carousel hanging from nothing more than two hooks pushed through their skin on their backs. OK, first, I want to get uh, Shiva because I promised I'll show you how Shiva is a, w a wicked deity, basically. <laughs> All right. Who's not Yahweh Bashim Yasha? You know, I even hate mentioning these cats, but it's all for edification. It says, uh, meaning the auspicious one, also known as Mahadeva. Deva in their language means God. Uh, one of the principal deities of Hinduism, he is the supreme being with Shaivism, one of the major uh, traditions in contemporary Hinduism. So, supreme being, lord of divine energy, meditation, arts, yoga, time, destruction, dance, supreme destroyer of evil. Lover of the divas, Lord of the divas. So this is supposed to be the God of gods, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Supreme being. But see, this is the thing is they're they're through. Hey, Yahweh Shai is the uh, Lord of Lords, Kings of Kings. Ultimately, Yahweh. All right. You know, so th these people don't know what they're talking about, man. This is just folly. You sit up, you got your idol God here. He's a statue of Shiva meditating. That's an idol God just made for people to worship. A, a God made with hands. That it, Shiva ain't going to never get up. Shiva ain't going to never walk. Shiva ain't going to never talk. All right. Multiple hands, witchcraft, you know, androgynous. You don't know if it's a man or a woman. No beard on the face. You know, long hair. You know, uh, Shiva, it says this is the main part I want to get because I'm not about to read all this nonsense they got under here. Shiva is known as the destroyer. OK, <laughs> Shiva is known as the destroyer, man. That's that's what they said. So that ultimately they're afraid of Shiva because of the destruction that Shiva can bring. But that's that's your whole about from y'all shy, you know. And I, I, brothers, you know, this. Let me see. OK, 
See, the, the destroyer is ultimately Yahweh Shai. Really, what it comes down to, it man. All right. Let me, let me, uh, this is Exodus 12 and 23 for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. All right. Death angel, man. Okay. Uh, and this one I always like to use, but I know it's talking about Nebuchadnezzar, but I, it still can apply to you. How shock is the truth. This is Jeremiah 4 and 7. It says the lion has come up from his thicket and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth of this place to make thy land desolate and thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant, man. OK, so, hey, Yahweh Shai is the ultimate destroyer, to be honest, man, especially of the other nations of the Gentiles. OK, it's but two. All right. So let me uh, go back to this. Esau, I'm just trying to mess up everything now. I lost my damn article. Hold on. I saved it. Okay, so this next part, I think, yeah, it's like, I think I got like one or two more scriptures I want to get and then I'll wrap it up. Uh, so it says, He's 34, Suman, and he says he's been taking part in Gajan rituals every year since he was 12. At the at, at first, the priest refuses to impale him, arguing he has no more space left on his back. So what does he mean by that? So this is what I meant by that it makes a permanent mark because he said he had no more space left on his back, meaning he's been doing it since he was 12 years old. The man's been doing this shit for 20 years. You know, 22 years he's been participating in this shit, so he ain't got no more space on his back, meaning... His fucking, uh, all his, his back is probably got holed up, uh, uh, you know, spots and holes where he, can, he just can't grab it with the hooks anymore. You know, this is a wicked ceremony, man. All right. And this is something the Lord, we got to destroy through the spirit of the Lord, man. At first, the, the priest refuses to impale him, arguing he has no more space left on his back. But when Suman angrily insists, the priest slaps his lower back, grabs a handful of his flesh, stretches it as far as he can, then forces the hook through. Suman's fists clench tightly, his eyes clamp shut, and the veins on his forehead look like they're about to pop. He faints. That man fainted from that shit, man. You know, no matter how drunk or how he is with all them holes in his back, man. Okay, and, and y'all gonna faint at Yahweh Shai, man. You know, y'all think that's pain. Hey, wait, just wait until them thermonuclear missiles coming down on people. Wait until the, the chariots are zapping you, all right? They pour water on him and slap him to wake him up. Then he gets up, holding on to another devotee for uh, a balance, who uh, directs him onto the platform to get the carousel. They tie the rope to the hook, okay? It says Suman is counterbalanced by another devotee on the other side of the carousel, both rotating as the rest of the attendees cheer them on. They display no sign of pain. Suman is smiling and interacting with the crowd underneath him. Also, because when you when you have a certain points of your skin, it may not hurt as much, you know, and they're high and drunk, you know, so they don't have they're, they're avoiding the pain points of major arteries and things. You know, the skin is a, a very stretchable and elastic uh thing that is the biggest organ on your body it says uh, uh after a few rounds the carousel shows slows down and suman grabs one of the many babies that her parents are holding up to receive shiva's blessing suman and his counterpart hold a crying baby for one rotation then return to his parents and grab another all right so before i want to go there i want to get this um jeremiah let me get jeremiah first and then um a verse in corinthians I believe maybe I want to get that Ezekiel too. Jeremiah 49. Um, Jeremiah 49 and 37. It says. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life. And I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger saith the Lord, Yahweh, and I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. See, they, hey, right now they are sticking themselves with rods and all that kind of stuff. Hey, the Lord said he going to consume y'all anyway, man. Y'all y'all going to get put to death, man, you Elamites. Okay? And you're going to be dismayed, man. 
It says, and I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy them from thence. The king and the princes said the Lord, hey, your caste system that you got over here, your highs and your lows, your people that are in ruling, your people that are on the bottom, they all going to be uh, put to death. All right. And they all going to become slaves. All right. Matter of fact, this next verse says that. But it shall come to pass in the latter days that I will bring again the captivity of Elam, said the Lord. So the Lord said he's going to bring y'all slavery again. And that's going to happen under the foot of the Israelites. The so-called blacks, Native Americans, Hispanics. Now, there are people that over there look like Elamites that are really Israelites and they, they may not know it. But, hey, we are scattered everywhere. OK, so um, let me see. Ezekiel, uh, I guess I could have went to the blue letter Let me go to Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel 24, I think. If I'm not mistaken. So lock it, bear with me. I could have sworn it's 24. Let me see, Elam. Ezekiel 32 and 24. That's what I had the verses. I do that all the time. So I got dyslexia. That's what brothers be like. Hey, brother, you know, it was this verse. Oh, shit, my bad. It might have just been <laughs> reversed, man. Ezekiel 32 and 24. There's Elam and all her multitude round about her grave. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living. living. Yet have they borne their shame and with them that go down to the pit. You see, so this this chapter speaks about a lot of the different nations and it started off talking about Egypt, you know, but where are we now? We're in the modern day Egypt now, you know, but hey, Elam, you, you're going to be, it said they're born their shame and, and with them that go down to the pit. And who are those that go down to the pit? Ultimately is Esau, Edom. Okay, but you you other nations for a thousand years, you, you're going to have to uh, be as slaves with the Edomites because of all of the y'all, y'all shame. The wickedness that y'all have done to the children of Israel, the wickedness that y'all have done to the earth, y'all defiling uh, the heavenly father and using all these, talking to all these other gods. Hey, you're going to get uh, slain down. And see, let me get this word. It says all of them that go down uncircumcised. OK, they shall fall by the sword. OK, so it says uncircumcised, having foreskin. OK, so let's go back to Genesis, the 17th chapter, because we need to know. They said they they. Matter of fact, let me read something before I read that. Let me read something. Okay, where is it? It says, As long as the devotees are up there, they are not themselves, but they're Shiva in disguise. One mother tells me, When my Lord has my baby, I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> when my Lord has my baby, I have nothing to worry about. So now these men that are just swinging on these damn things, all uh, right, hey, that that's your Lord. They're Shiva in disguise. Okay, which lets you know that these people are not the uh, people of the Heavenly Father. Okay, because before I get Genesis 17, I'm kind of going in a different direction. But let me just get this while it's on my mind. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High, that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you? All right, so, hey, Shiva's supposed to be in them all the time. If that's the case, not just when they up there on the damn swing, drunk and high out of their minds, you think that, you know, they're not going to drop your baby. You give them to drunk and high men, you know, but the spirit's supposed to be in you all the time. It says, oh, uh, let me let me see that. If you're supposed to be uh, calling yourself uh, a spiritual man, y'all got all these priests and shamans. OK, this is. Galatians 5 and 25, it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. OK, <laughs> if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. So if you are supposed to be with the spirit, supposed to be with you all the time, man. Verse 26, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. And these men, that's why he said, hey, yo, stab me, stab me. He, he desired vain glory. He been doing that shit for years. Everybody like, oh, yeah, you know, you did it. Hey, that people see him in the town. You know, you were one of the guys who were, you know, dangling for Shiva. 
You know? So he he trying to get vain glory off of that, man. But I wanted to get uh, you know, Genesis because I want to get what well, it says they shall go down, all of them uncircumcised, because all these other nations, man, they be uncircumcised, but it's bigger than just having just thinking about your rod. It's bigger than that, okay? And I wanted to get <clears throat> Salakia. Um I want to get Genesis 17 and 10. Matter of fact, I'm gonna start at nine. It says, and the most high said unto Abraham, thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. And not just Abraham was a father. His name literally means father of nations. Abraham. OK, so it's not literally talking about uh, all the nations of the earth or the nations that came out of Abraham. It's talking about Abraham, uh, Isaac and Jacob. So the Israelites. All right. Because if you read Romans, uh, I believe the ninth chapter chapter, it says, um, you know, of thy seed that shall be called, you know, of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the lineage of Yahweh, the children of Israel. Okay. It says, uh, this is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. OK, so it was supposed to be a covenant. All right. Between uh, Abraham and his his generations, his descendants to know that, that that's a covenant between the heavenly father and uh, the children of Israel. OK. And so I, I wanted to bring that part out. Because the children of Israel, Israel are the ones who are in tune with Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, who have a covenant with Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. So not just about it, but that was an action that that was necessary for who knows. For I mean for uh for the children of Israel to have a a, a covenant, a agreement with the Heavenly Father. But these other nations, they don't have that agreement. And one of one sign of that is their uncircumcision. So it says there is also there is Elam and all our multitude round about her grave and all of them slain fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether, nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living. You know, that, that in real talk, this is terrible, man. This is a point, even though they did way more worse shit than this. They've had them as slaves too, you know, but they've, this is a part of their terror. You got people thinking that this is the way to God, man, hanging by your back, you know, hanging by your back on some damn uh, hooks, man, you know, um, I just thought of a precept and then left that quickly too. Um, but it says, uh, after about 10 minutes, the carousel stops, gets all replaced by another devotee. The whole time I was up there, I felt spiritually connected to God. I felt like a bridge between him and the rest of the community. He tells me with hooks still in his back. And so that's what I wanted to bring out. So you say you spiritually connect to God. You supposed to be spiritually connected with him all the time. If you are a man of the Lord. Okay. I asked him what he thinks would happen if Gajan was to stop taking place. He said, it'll be the end of the world. Suman responds without hesitation. Lord Shiva's rage will destroy us all. Okay, so they didn't get to do it this year. Say, hey, Lord willing, this the last year, man. <laughs> Since y'all think that's what's up, man. But hey, they would think that's the cause of Shiva. But they shall know that Yahweh Bashim Yahshah is the one that did it, not Shiva. Um, oh, Psalms. Because he said they are going to have... Uh, the hooks, right? What do you let me see how he said it? He said, I forgot what exactly what it is, but they got the they got the hooks of iron, right? Let me go back up. It says shall have several iron rods in their flesh, right? So Psalms 149. It says, uh let the high praise of the most, verse six, let the high praise of the most high be in their mouth and the two edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints praise ye the Lord. So the saints of the most high are going to have a pleasure putting y'all in, in chains and iron, man, fetters of iron. If that's what y'all so desire, hey, we, we'll gladly do that, man, because the, the Lord ordained it to be so. Hey, so Elam, it's a wrap for you, you so-called uh, East Indians, man. You're Elamites. And the, the things like this show that you're the heathen, man. Rituals like this let you know that these are heathen. 
You know, these are heathen customs, man. Okay? Ain't no men of the Lord going to be doing nothing like this, man. People that are spiritual aren't going to be doing stuff like this. All right? So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. All right? I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Shalom.